I have missed doing the monthly reading statistics, so let's just get into it. Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today it is time for my January wrap up. A little bit delayed because I've been ill. Excuse me again if I sound annoying today. It's still there. So yeah, it's time for a wrap up. I didn't do wrap ups for November or December just because I was so busy with like end of year content and then beginning of year content. But we're back, we're back with the wrap ups. <laughs> I'm very happy to say. If you don't know how my wrap up videos work, how we do it is that first we go through all the reading statistics. Then I show you all the books I. I've read but I just show you them and tell you the ratings and then we talk more in depth about my disappointment surprises and hits this is just a more fun way for me of doing the video because if I had to speak about every book again I would go insane or I was going insane doing that for wrap up so I just think it's a bit more spicy <laughs> just talking about the books that really had an impact this month whether it was good or bad so Let's not waste any time. Let's just get into it. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm so excited for the statistics of the year. So in January, I did really well on getting ahead on my Goodreads goal, getting ahead on the reading goal for the year. I read a total of 15 books. Now we will see quite a few of them are what I would class as short stories. I think maybe three or four of them were <laughs> short stories, which were between 10 and 30 pages each, okay? They were very short, but they're on Goodreads, so it counts, okay? That's how it works. <laughs> The rules don't apply. These were short stories that were related to two different series that I'm currently reading. I've never read these short stories. I don't usually make time for them, like these little extra parts of the <laughs> series I'm currently reading, but this month I did and it helped me get ahead of my goal. So my pages read was 3,071. That means an average pages per day of 99. So as you can begin to tell, even though I read a lot of books, books. I didn't read a ton of pages per se because that's a little bit under, I like to read on average 100 pages per day. So the average book length was 204 pages. So like I said, there's at least three books on here that were like 10 pages each. So that has brought the average down. My average rating was 3.94, which is pretty high, like getting close to a four, for, especially for how many books I read, I think is pretty high. And the average time a book had spent on my TBR was three months. I had a lot of books that I classed as zero months on my TBR, be that the short stories, because I'd never really planned on reading them before and I just picked them up this month. Four books I read this month were rereads for the Wayward Children series. I still need to reread the last three that I haven't reread. I'm doing a vlog on my Patreon for it. I was planning on reading them at the end of January, but then I got sick, so I need to read them at some point in February. And now February's a pod ass, so I'm behind on February stuff, so I don't know quite when I'm gonna get around to them, but sometime in February I will, so I get the vlog up. But yeah, three months is super short for average time on TBR, but that's because there was a lot that was zero. <laughs> and then, oh, I'm so excited for my new spreadsheet to see what these stats are, let's get into it. In terms of genre, I read six fantasy, one horror, one magical realism, two mystery, four sci-fi, three of them were, <laughs> were short stories, and one thriller. So yeah, a lot of fantasy this month, four of those are the Wayward Children series. Oh no, five, because I read one short story for the Wayward Children series as well. So yeah, a lot of the fantasy is skewed by the Wayward Children series, but listen, I it's quite a good mix. Rating, I read two 2.5s, three three stars, two 3.5s, two four stars, and six five stars. But again, three of those six five stars, so half of them were rereads with the Wayward Children series. In terms of the source that I read, two were just audiobooks, four were ebooks, five were physical books, and four were a mixture. So that's pretty typical, I would say. Apart from the ebooks, obviously that was the short stories that I read this month because I got them just all on websites. I don't typically read a ton of ebooks. But yeah, I'd say like a fair amount that I just read physically, some that I had both the audiobook and the physical book. I think one of the audiobooks that I classed as was The Weight of Blood, which I do own physically, but I pretty much just read the entire thing via the audiobook because I was enjoying the audiobook so much. <laughs> In terms of audience, 13 were adult and two were YA. Again, I'm tending to read a lot more adult books now. In terms of format, seven were novels, four were novellas, and four were short stories. So there's those, those short stories that I've been chatting about. <laughs> In 
future months, this will probably all be novels. Do you know what I mean? I don't typically read a ton of novellas or short stories. I just did this month because of the Way Return reread and my sudden desire to read <laughs> read those short stories. In terms of where the books were from, one was from Book of the Month, one was Gifted, seven were books that I'd bought myself, one was from the publisher, one was from Scribd, and four I got online. In terms of series stats, eight were part of a series, four were standalones, and three were first in series. But out of the ones that were first in series. I am not continuing with the Death and Croissants series. One of them was Every Heart a Doorway, which was a reread. And then one was Legends and Lattes, which I am gonna continue. So only one new series started this month. In terms of author stats, one was a debut, 11 books were from authors I've read from before, and three authors were new to me. Okay, that is my reading stats. Let's get into chatting quickly about all of the books I read this month. So in the order that I read them, we have Legends and Lattes, which I gave five stars. Death and Croissants by Ian Moore, which I gave three stars. Five Survive by Holly Jackson, which I gave 2.5 stars. <laughs> Then I had my Wayward Children reread where I, well, I started it. We have uh, Every Heart a Doorway and Down Among Sticks and Bones by Shauna Maguire, which I gave five stars. Then I read the audiobook for Beneath the Sugar Sky, which I gave four stars. We have In an Absent Dream, which I gave five stars. Then I read the short story Juice Like Wounds by Shauna Maguire, which I gave four stars. Then I started reading some short stories for the Sleeping Giants series. Is that what it's called or is it called something else? Oh, The Themis Files. Yeah, I read some of the short stories from The Themis Files by Sylvain Nouvelle. So I read file number two, which I gave 3.5 stars. Then I read The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson, which I gave five stars. Then I read two more of the Themis Files short stories. I read file number 247, which I gave three stars, and file number 1743, which I also gave three stars. I read The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey, which I gave 3.5 stars. The Cartographers by Peng Shepard, which I gave 2.5 stars. And finally, The Burning Issue of the Day by T.E. Kinsey, next to the Lady Hard Castle Mystery Series, which I gave five stars. Okay, that is all the books. Let's chat about disappointments, surprises, and hits now. Okay, I would say my biggest disappointment by far, I don't even want to talk about it. Can we just pretend it didn't happen? It's Five Survive by Holly Jackson, which I gave 2.5. <laughs> I can't even look at the wall without thinking sad things. I did a whole reading vlog for this, which you can go watch if you want to see my disappointment. I just want to say a few things from that video that I feel like I missed and I was sleep deprived. If you don't know, I read this from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Firstly, I know my reading well enough to know that if I had read this during the day or not in that kind of challenge format, I would have still given it 2.5 stars. Secondly, <laughs> I did that video because it genuinely did not cross my mind that this could be anything less than a four star. Like that did not even enter like my consciousness. I don't think I would have done it otherwise. I don't think I would have put myself through that. I loved the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. Where is she? Oh, it's up there. I loved that so much. It is one of my favorite series. I think her writing was incredible in that series and it just feels like someone else wrote this. I feel so bad, okay? And I was gonna update the, the vlog in the morning had I had any different thoughts, but I didn't. I still feel the same way about this. This is a like sniper thriller where these six characters are on this, what is it called, an RV? Yeah, they're on this RV, their tires get blown out and they soon find out there's a sniper wanting to kill them unless a secret is revealed, essentially. I just thought, <laughs> there's, I mean, I have so many problems with it. I didn't feel like the writing was great. The pacing for a book that is supposed to take place over such a short period of time, it felt so dragged out. Like the pacing was not quick, it was not exciting. The characters felt very one dimensional. The plot twists were not twisting. <laughs> Push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. For me, everything felt really obvious. I said in it, like, once you found out one piece of information, you knew what was gonna get revealed next. I can't believe that the resolution of this was what it was. This was just, I mean, this is disappointment upon disappointment. I have not had a disappointment like this in a long time. <laughs> and then I would say my other disappointment was The Cartographers by Peng Shepard. I gave this 2.5 stars as well. This is about a girl who, um, her whole family has been into map making. She was supposed to go into map, not map making, map, map study, I guess. Um, yeah, she was supposed to go into this like cartography like her dad, but they had this big argument and he demanded that she be fired from the public library where all the cartographers work. And now he's dead and it 
is he is it natural causes or is something deeper going on um, and this is magical realism right but I don't that doesn't really begin to halfway through it's classed as magical realism on good reason everything but like it takes a while to get there this one I remember saying I read this um, in a video where I read books that TBR Cluedo had picked for me and I remember feeling like I just kept oscillating between being really into it like for 10 pages like okay, okay like I'm so into this what's gonna happen I'm so into it like let's read let's read and then having no interest in being bored and not wanting to pick it up it was a very strange book and the ending I I understand why everyone doesn't like the ending. But I don't think it's necessarily a bad <laughs> But I did tell a bit of a lie there. It leaves the reader feeling unsatisfied because all of these characters have made sacrifices and have gone through really painful stuff through the rest of the book. And the ending kind of means that that was all for nothing. And it leaves you feeling a bit like, oh, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's a pretty forgettable book as well. I don't think I'll be thinking about this at the end of the year. I wouldn't say I had a ton of surprises this month because a lot of my reading was obviously rereads, but this one is a surprise, but it's also a hit. So it's, um, it falls under both. It's a way to bridge the two, but this is the only surprise I would say I had this month. The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. I read this in the same blog that I read The Cartographers. I loved this. Me and Tiffany D. Jackson. It's a surprise, right? Because I've, to this day, I'd previously only given Tiffany D. Jackson a three star or a 2.5 star, maybe even like a two. And I always felt like me and her could get it. Like I always felt like me and her could click, you know? Because I love her synopses. She has some of my favorite synopses. This is a Carrie retelling and I love it. You know what's the most exciting thing about winning? It's when you win. I love that feeling. I thought the audiobook for this was great. I just listened to the audiobook for this. I loved it. So we're following a girl who has been trying to pass as white. She's mixed race and it gets revealed that she's black and she lives in this town that is very racist, has ingrained racial inequalities and there's this, it revolves around the prom and previously they'd had segregated proms. They've got their first integrated prom. And I just loved it. You know that there's this big event that happens at the end where she may kill a lot of people. I don't believe in the glorification of murder. I do believe in the empowerment of women. But I loved the podcast as a podcast kind of interspersed, not too much throughout this, kind of talking about what she did and what really happened. And we follow a lot of different characters and a lot of different storylines. And I really liked the way it jumped between them. I thought the writing was great. I really loved Maddie as a character. She's a, lived a very sheltered life. Her dad um, is the one who's forced her to pass as white and he's very racist and he's taught her a lot of untruths. And I was just captivated by this book. I loved it. I loved it. So yeah, it was a surprise kind of but I'd always had this ingrained belief that, that me and Tiffany D. Jackson could get along and it finally happened and then we have two hits of the month I'm not including the way we're children series reread in this obviously because it's a reread so I'm only talking about new books my biggest hit of the month was by far Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry this was my first book of the year I read it in a vlog where I picked the first book of the year by doing a try a chapter because I have a superstition that in order to have a good year my first book of the year has to be five stars it's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in every year since I've been reading again since what 2018 bar last year I have had a five star as my first book of the year. Or I think one year was a 4.5. That's close enough. <laughs> And I loved this. If you don't know by now, this is about an orc who opens up a coffee shop and it's cozy fantasy. And I just loved it. I loved the descriptions of making coffee and cooking these like bakery cakes. I thought it's still, people say it's low stakes and I think it is low stakes because people are not getting like murdered outright. <laughs> and we haven't got war, but there is still enough stakes to keep you interested, to keep you intrigued, keep you concerned for our main character because you want everything to go well. I love the characters, Thimble. I rarely love a character as much as I loved Thimble. Oh my God, I love Thimble. I just want to protect Thimble forever. It felt warm, it felt cozy, it felt comforting. This is definitely going to be in contention for my top 10 books of the year. I loved it. I just can't get over how much I loved it. And I'm so excited there is a prequel coming out at the end of the year, I think, called, I think it's Bookshops and Bone Dust or Bone Dust and Bookshops, something like that. But I am a bit concerned because I don't think that that is a prequel, obviously, and our main character, the orc, was previously kind of like, she worked in like a 
adventuring, like beating people up, like war kind of, I guess. I loved so much about this, the setting at the coffee shop, and I'm like, oh shit, what is it? Like, what's it gonna be like being in the prequel? I don't know. So I am really excited, but I am nervous, but I just loved this. I loved it so much. It felt like every word was intentional. Every sentence was there for a reason, and I loved that in books. And then my final hit, <laughs> I don't know if this will be in contention for top 10 books of the year, but I had a great time reading it. The Burning Issue of the Day by T. E. Kinsey. This is the fifth? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> the fifth in the Wayward, uh, the Wayward Children. The fifth in the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. This is my favourite cosy mystery series. We're following Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo. It is narrated from Flo's perspective. They have a much closer relationship than Lady and Maid would traditionally. They've been together for many years. Lady Hardcastle, is it a spoiler? I don't think so. They previously were like spies. <laughs> they have all these crazy stories from their past life that are scattered throughout. But now they've kind of moved to the countryside to retire, but they have have moved to the murder hotspot of the world and so they're always kind of being asked to investigate stuff together and Flo is really funny, their relationship is really funny, I love the writing in these, they're kind of just a comfort read for me at this point, particularly the audiobooks as well, I love the audiobooks for these so much. I'm going to try and read, this one's set in January, I'm going to try and read this year all the other books like when they're kind of set around that time, but there's a lot set in the summer, like the next three I think are set in the summer so I might have to like read the one that's set in July and May, maybe like space it out a bit. But in this one they are helping a group of suffragettes. One of them has been accused of murder, but her friends are saying that she didn't do it. And so they're kind of investigating the situation. I just love it. Like, it's just, I mean, what is there to say? I love the writing. I think it has this warmth, again, this joy, this coziness to it that I just love. I want to kind of finish or get up to date with this series before I start another cozy mystery series and to me it's just the best. If you want to start cozy mysteries and are interested in one particularly with like a historical twist, I would really recommend the audiobooks. I don't think pick up them physically, I think get the audiobooks, they are on script. Um, I have a link down below where I think you can get two months free of script if you want. So I love, I love... <laughs> I love them. I protect Lady Hardcastle and Flo for the rest of my life. They're just fun, you know? They're just fun, palate cleansers, enjoyable treat, and I love them. So there we have it. That was my January wrap-up. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of any of the books that I've mentioned. I'll leave all the vlogs I posted in January linked down below where you can see some of these books read in greater detail. If you got to the end of the video, comment the newspaper, like any kind of newspaper burning issue of the day emoji or a fire emoji. <laughs> Comment that down below if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in another video.